I'm Mount Vernon. Everything we do is about collaborating, so we had to really think, and we have a lot of experts who went through a ton of research and gave us kind of some guidelines about here's how we need to stay safe. Um, masks being the number one priority to prevent droplet transfer. And then we literally went through the building and we measured multiple times to make sure that desks were spaced apart and when people were sitting down that they would be the appropriate distance away. I had to tell myself this pretty early on in COVID, like back in March or something. Uh, I just basically was like, look, nothing from here on out is probably, you know, within your control beyond your immediate responsibilities. So whatever happens, you just kind of got to lean in. In the classroom, we ask the kids to keep their masks on at all times. If they need a sip of water, we ask that they take it down, drink, put it right back on. Um, we don't want kids to be congregating for more than a couple of minutes. You know, if they're working on a group project and you need to go ask a question, that's fine. But we don't want you sitting together, super close together. We want everybody to be spaced apart. We never had seating charts before because it was a lot you know, more open, but now we have really structured, we need to know who's sitting where at every moment. Just the amount of stuff that you know, we can do in a classroom is, is limited compared to last year. So like group work, uh, you know, I just haven't done as much of it, but uh, you know, last year there was a ton of group work. One major difference is the screening process each student is required to do before the school day starts. There's a couple of questions that we ask, which one is, are you having any symptoms, head, throat, or stomach? We're just looking to see if you're having any symptoms, we want you to stay home instead of coming here and developing anything else. Uh, the other question is, have you been in contact with anyone who was you know, COVID positive in the past 14 days? because we also would want you to stay home and wait and see if you develop any symptoms. So we ask those questions and we take your temperature to make sure that you don't have a fever. And then that's pretty much it. So for cross country, we did, well, you've seen, yeah, we, we've been splitting up practices. So for the entire time that the school was on uh, every other day virtual in-person rotation, we did an early practice and, uh, and a later practice. And so everyone uh, prior to practice wore their masks, um, tried to keep as socially distant as possible. Then we'd warm up and stretch socially distant and then we'd, we'd run, our, run our routes and emphasize to everyone the importance of not clustering together. It's definitely been sort of a series of reminders and then protocols and then more reminders and then changes and then more reminders and the information has been sort of you know changing so rapidly from you know spring when we were all locked down to now we're back you know staggered and now we're back full time um, so really it's just trying to keep up with it as much as you can. It's definitely different I mean especially with the amount of needs that are available you know, they're are a lot fewer beats, you know, because schools are not as willing to host them. The one next week that I'm missing is going to look very different. That'll be a time trial for each school, so only one school will run at a time. And so Mount, Mount Vernon will run, and then the next school will run, and then the next school will run. Um, and so that's, that's, something, that's something new. Some meets you have to do waivers. You have to screen them for every single meet. So we screen you guys like we do at practices before you guys get on the bus. That's new. Um, we take, you know, 47 buses to every single meet instead of, <laughs> instead of one. That's new. But at other meets, uh, there's been a rule that everybody has to wear their masks uh, on the bus and uh, before the meets. Um, and then after the meets too, when you get back. And so uh, making sure everybody has their masks on unless the racing has been important. I, basically repeat two things all day every day which is keep your mask on and get away from each other <laughs> there's only been a handful of cases and they've been contained by having the surrounding students you know quarantine if i'm talking specifically about cross country i feel like what's already happening is good enough uh i don't think there needs to be any more or any less uh as far as as far as we know we haven't had any you know any uh incidents or outbreaks in our in our group so Appears to be working. At the end of the day, you know, we just put our, have our masks on at the beginning and take our masks off during practice and then put our masks back on afterwards and that's kind of it really.
practices um, starting off was different because you had to be two different teams. You know, back in June when we first were able to actually come back to campus, uh, we split our teams up into small, small groups. We did different screenings. Um, we had different groups on the field. That was the same group that they stayed with. They left campus before the next group came to the field. So we really had no, no opportunity on campus to cross each other's paths. Um, the locker rooms are still off limits. We're trying to keep our kids outside, keep them social distance. Coaches are coaching in masks. Players have their mask on if they're on the sideline. Um, so washing our hands, we mandate these guys are washing their clothes if they're in after every practice. Um, so we're doing as best we can to make sure that our kids are making good choices to keep us all healthy. First of all, we didn't have summer workouts that we normally do. We can't. We weren't allowed to go into our gym until uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, games look different. We've, we've been able to use from the 10-yard line to the opposite 10-yard line, so we had a bigger sideline to allow our kids to stay, stay socially distanced and healthy and safe. Um, so it wasn't really until about a month ago that our team actually came together as one team, which is challenging to try to prepare for a season and for an opponent when your team's not really coming together. But like I said at the beginning, ultimately we gotta keep our kids safe and healthy. We ourselves are, have self-responsibility, and it's, it's important that we keep ourselves healthy, but also others and uh, simply wearing a mask uh, that helps that. COVID protocols are really weird. We have to wear a mask when we're in our helmet. Like, it's just something I've never done before. Obviously, we want to play. Um, we want our kids to get that experience, the social life, uh, being around their teammates, all that's obviously important. Winning games, obviously that's important, but the, the number one factor is we make sure our kids stay safe and healthy. But as far as the amount of number of the cases that we've had, I think we've done well. I think the school's done a great job having a plan. I think we're definitely doing a good job keeping everybody safe. We haven't had uh, um, like closed down the whole team yet, like a few other schools have, and uh, we're also not treating it like it's um, non-existent or not there. We're following the guidelines, using masks, and trying to be safe. I think we're doing a good job. My number one priority as far as the volleyball program is protecting everybody from the parents to our players um, to our coaches. Even though it wasn't mandated that the kids had to wear masks on the court, I decided to make sure that we did. So I programmed wear masks the whole time in practice, in games. It's just never a time we don't have them on unless we're drinking water or something. We're the only team that does it. So all the other teams have it off like on the sidelines, but we have it on and off the court. But it's kind of just like anything else. If you go to the grocery store, you should probably wear a mask. So um, we've been wearing masks when we practice. Um, even if it's just our team in the gym, we're always wearing masks. Or when we play games too. And it's kind of weird getting used to like breathing through a mask, especially if you're running around a lot. In the past years, we've obviously not had to wear masks, so it's difficult to at least for me to sometimes control my breathing because obviously wearing masks is important, but if we're wearing a thicker one, it's a little more difficult. A big difference, um, even from the point of traveling, I mean, we're, you know, we have to social distance on buses and um, when we get there, we're getting our temperature taken. We stand up six feet apart on the sideline. I feel like they've done a good job with contact tracing too. Right now, I'm unfortunately quarantining, so I haven't played for last week and I won't be playing this week either. But it's good because it keeps the rest of my team healthy in case I had something. This year we've had some people come and go just because of being exposed to COVID. So over the course of the season, I've been out a total of four weeks. It's been hard to kind of adjust to having people and then people coming back. We lost some matches due to the Fulton County like postponed their sports. And so we lost a significant amount of our schedule and it kind of made it hard to get some of those good practice matches in. Even though it kind of stinks not having students at um, the different matches, it is probably for the best that everyone's not sitting in bleachers together. And really for the best of the athletes, um, that we don't have a lot of spectators to keep us safe and healthy. As of right now, I'm doing virtual to kind of protect our playoff season and stuff. So I think that was a good option for them to give us. It allows us to not be exposed to someone at the school and it allows us to keep our season going. I think it's important to know that it takes a lot of people to get this done. It's just one player at a time. You have to make sure each 
person is taken care of and that um, if each person is doing what they need to do and taken care of, then it's taking care of the, the program and the teams individually. Because none of this feels particularly normal. Nothing about this entire year has felt normal. Me and everyone else, I think mental health should be a huge priority. Doing something every day that you enjoy, I think is incredibly important. I think we've done a great job uh, and we're still in school. So I think that's the result of, of that as well. At first it was pretty tough um, because it was just remembering, you gotta do this and you can't do this. And But now it's like a part of who we are and we just do it and get it done. I really appreciate Mount Vernon has actually allowed us in these next weeks to do school from home and still play at the same time because we're going to state playoffs, hopefully. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I think that's one of the good things that they've done about giving athletes more options to stay healthy. So. Every day is a challenge, honestly. Uh, but you know, ultimately, we just want to make sure our kids are staying safe. So as we learn more about um, COVID, how it affects everybody, uh, we just continue to adapt based off of what we're being told from individuals that are way smarter than us coaches are about it. Um, but ultimately, we'll make sure our kids stay safe and healthy.